Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today we're going to do something similar to what we did the other day, where we're going to enhance line charts with ggplot. The other day we did that with bar charts, but today we're going to do it with really cool line charts. I'm going to show you some advanced techniques, some things like year over year. And you're going to end up with a chart like this in the end. This is showing data for uh, eBay sales for two different sellers, seller A and seller B, over a time period of numerous years. And so I've got two lines in here, red and blue, showing that. We'll end up with this. We're going to start off simple and then we'll go to this in the end. So what I want to do is I want to show you first what we're going to do is loading the libraries, right? Because these are important. So, and I don't like to show data in a normal boring fashion. So we're going to use Cable Extra right here, Tidyverse, and Zoo. So those are the three libraries you're going to load in right here. Library, parentheses, and then the package. If you don't have it installed, it's fine. Just use this install.packages and then the name of the uh, package or library, which in this case is Zoo, in this example down here. Once you've done that, we're going to load in the data set. And let me go here. We don't need the first two. Uh, let's see. So let's delete these two out and leave this one. So what I'm using here is yearly eBay sales, right? So it's just a CSV. You could use any CSV you want. It doesn't matter. Um, or it could be an Excel file. You just have to use a different uh, loader, loading function for that. Read XLXX or something like that. So in this case, let me open this up so you can see the full code here. It's the full URL of where it's located on my laptop, right? Ending with the uh, name of the uh, data set and or the yeah the, the data sheet and then. Um, Header equals true and separated with comma, which means it's comma delimited. Okay, that's what it is, read CSV. Then what we do is we look at the data. Let's take a look at the head, right? So his head is the, uh, let's bring this back so we can actually see stuff here. But head gives us the top six, right? So if I wanted to look at the last six, I would put tail. Okay, so there it is right there, right? So you got year, units, and seller, right? A, and then obviously there's B. Um, better way to look at the data is with cable, so we do, let's open this back up so you can see it right here, is the head of it, same as here, goes into a data frame, and then we put cable data frame, and we import that into cable styling, bootstrap options equals striped, font size equals 10, full width equals full F, okay? So what that means, let me bring this all here, is that instead of seeing it like we saw right here, like this, we're going to see it over here, and watch what happens here. I like using cable because it's just prettier, okay? And I can show, you know, I don't have to show the head of the date. I can show a whole lot more. There could be many, many more uh, columns here. This is just three year, units, and seller, right? So the year of it, the units, and the seller. In this case, these are A. If I were to use the tail instead, it would show B. Um, and I'll show you right here. So if I did tail instead of head, and ran this, it gives me, see that, we got B's right there, okay, for the same number of years. So let's just change this back to head the way we had it. And then what we're going to do is go down here. So we've already shown you how to use it, show it here or there, right? You can show it in either the viewer or the console. So now let's restrict this to just seller A and just seller B, right? How would we do that? So what we do is we can use either native R which is this right here, which is you put the name of the data frame, right, which is test data one. And remember how I did that? So right here is this read CSV puts into test data one. So what I'm doing is test data one, where test data one, and then you pick the column, right? Dollar sign seller, right, which is this one, equals, equals, quotations, A or B. See how I did that right there? That'll split it up so that instead of having uh, them all in one, which would be 40. See that test data one has 40 observations, three variables. What this does, it puts in the underscore A, underscore B, each of them having 20, all of the A's and all of the seller B's in there. Okay. Now, alternatively, you don't have to use native R. You could also use deployer, which is uh, this right here, which comes with tidyverse, which you already loaded in. And you could use filter, the filter function right here. It does the same things, look prettier than that. And so you would just use filter of the uh, data frame and then the column without, you don't need to have it out like this with the data frame dollar sign and then the column and then equals equals A. So it's pretty similar, but it does the exact same thing. Okay. So if I ran this, you see right there, it gives you the same thing. 20 observations of three variables for 
where it equals A. Okay. Now let's do a simple line chart based on this, right? So if I take underscore A, which is this one, which is just the data frame with the seller of A, right? It's the 20 instances of that. And I take it for units and year, type equals O. Now watch what this plot does. It's a simple plot, right? And it looks like that. So we've got, it's kind of ugly. It's got the name of the actual uh, data frame and the dollar sign and then the column name on both sides. It's got no uh, title, subtitle, or caption, or anything else. And it's kind of ugly looking, right? It's okay, it gives us our data if we want a quick look. But what I want to do is I make it better. So I can also take that same, remember this is just the plot function, we haven't gotten to ggplot yet, okay? So this is just native R plots. If I do this and I have the year and the units and type equals O, the same as the first line, but now I'm going to add main equals yearly eBay sales, which is going to be the title, that's what title is in plot, is main. And then we got the X label and the Y label of year and units sold. So if we run that, Give it a second here, and there we go. Yearly eBay sales. See how it changes? The, the middle part doesn't change, but the top does. Yearly eBay sales. Okay, so we got that. Units sold. That's cleaner looking than the data frame, dollar sign, the column, and then year. Okay, so that's okay. That's acceptable, but I want to have it looking better. And I know I can do that far better in ggplot than I can in plot. So let's go to the next one. The next row is simple ggplot line graph, right? So what you have is you have a ggplot function, and then plus you bring your geometry. So in this case, geom line, right? So you've got geom line, then your aesthetics, right? Which is right here, aesthetics of y equals units, x equals year, and obviously the data is where am I bringing the data from? If I'm using test data one, that's the original data that has both a and b in it, right? So if I put that into lg1, all I gotta do is I can just do this. And there it is. So that shows me it without having, now I can also, this just puts it into LG1 and then I run LG1, it does the same thing as this would. So we've got units, you've got year, but it is kind of ugly and this has all of the data for both A and B. So see how it's got two points in the same area? That's what happens when you do that. So if I want to do it for one, I could just do this underscore A or underscore B. So let's go and first change the line thickness and color. Right? And then we'll make one for, uh, we're going to have one for the um, data, here it is right here, A and for B. Right? Remember how we split that up into, so we had seller A and seller B. So let's do that and let's do this. Let's, oops, let's run this. Let's run this line here. And I want to show you this and I'm going to put it in LG1. So let's do that. And I'll put this one into LG2. It's not going to show it right yet, but let me just show you this. Let's do that. So we got both of those. And let's take this right here and show you what it is. That is underscore A, right? Which is seller A in blue. And then I've got in steel blue, actually. So I've got color equals steel blue, data equals test data one underscore A. And we've got uh, ggplot plus geom line aesthetics of units and year. Y equals units, X equals year. Size equals 0 0.8. And that's what that looks like. Now I can do the same thing here and see the difference. That one's purple. That's seller B. Okay. So what I need to do, if I want to show them both on the same graph, right, I can have two separate graphs and that's fine if I want to do that. But to really compare them, I want to put them one on top of the other, right? That makes more sense and shows me a better comparison between the two sellers over the same time period. So what we want to do is we want to add so we've got ggplot plus geom line, right? This is the A part, or the first part we saw right here. But I'm adding another plus, and then I'm adding this part right here, the geom line, to this right there. So I've got two geom lines in there, right? And I've changed it because blue and purple are so close, you won't really see them as well and look messy. So I made it blue and red. It's the same thing. So let's do this. Put that into LG1. So that one, that LG1 contains both lines, right? Both sets of data. And let me show you what that looks like. So if I just did this, there you go. So now I've got this, but we're not done yet because it's got two lines on it, but it's got, and it's got the, the label for units and year, 
but it has no title, no subtitle, no caption. You know, it needs some more stuff to it. So now let's go down here. And we're going to take the same thing, but we're going to put labels on it. That's what labs function is. It's the labels. And so we've got labs, parentheses, title equals yearly eBay sales, comma, subtitle equals unit sales by year. X equals, you know, year. Y equals units sold. So instead of just units, I want units sold, right? Uh, caption equals, you know, the caption will be what would be down here. If I want to have a data source where I got it from, data source is XYZ incorporated. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. And then we've got the theme, right? So plus the theme. So that this is important here because if you don't do this, I'll show you what happens. If you, if you don't do this, everything's to the left. By doing this, H just equals 0 0.5 for each of these three for the plot title or the title, the subtitle, and the caption. It puts them kind of centered. The last one, I did not put it centered. I put 0 0.9, so it's a little bit off to the right, but not all the way to the right. So let me show you what happens here. If we do that, plus the last row right here of the, the continuous breaks, what this does, it tells me, okay, where do I want, what data points do I want down here, and how often do I want them to break up. So let's do this. Let me show you this. So right now you have 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015. Well, maybe I want to have more lines on there, right? So let's do this and look at the difference. So now we got yearly eBay sales, unit sales by year. So we've got both a title, a subtitle. We've got the correct labels here. We've got the caption down below. It's correctly where I want it. I don't want it all the way to the right, but it looks appropriate right there. That's 0 0.9 versus 0 0.5 would have put it right here where it wouldn't look good. And then look what it did. Instead of having 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, we've got more years in here, so it's a little bit easier and better for reading purposes, for looking at. So you can clearly see here, you know, where these two are, and you can clearly see, uh, you know, like a drop during a recession after 2008, you know, and again, after the correction in 2018, there's a serious drop for that. So maybe eBay gets affected pretty seriously by corrections and recessions, and that, that does sound about right. So again, what we did here was we added a bunch of features to it. If I didn't put these element equals 0 0.05, we could take these out, right? So if I go down here and I just put these number signs in here, which comments those out, so we just go from plus to this, and we just leave the scale in there, watch it what happens here. So if I do this and I run it, See how it moved everything over here and it moved that one too far to the right? So to make it look right, that's why I had the theme added in. Okay. And let's get rid of those pieces there. And so I've got here, remember how this works? So I've got, let's bring this up, make it look appropriate here. There. I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then this one is 0 0.9. So now let's fix that. Let's fix this and let's fix this. So let's just highlight the whole thing. Look at what happened there. It goes, this goes in the middle, and this goes not all the way to the right, but a little bit over where it should be, and it looks very pretty. We can bring it and make it bigger if we want to show it better. There we go. Look at that. So now you could easily compare, and this can apply very easily to year over year. So let's say instead of comparing sellers A and seller B, I could go back and instead have said um, up above when I created those two uh, right here, where I have test data 1A and test data 1B. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Right here. Instead of having it filter out either way, whether it would be with the filter function or the way I did with native R, I, instead of filtering it out by equals A or equals equals B, I could have said uh, year equals 2005 and year equals 2006. In this case, I only have one data point per year, that wouldn't look very good. But if I had a bunch of data points, like a full 52 weeks for each year, or if I had 12, one for each month of the year, I could compare two years on top of each other the same way, do year over year. Uh, maybe what I'll do is in a future video, I'll go and take some data where I have uh, maybe weekly data for two years and show you how to do them year over year to show that. Um, but that's basically uh, very similar to this. I hope you found this interesting. We went through every part of taking it from, I showed you the basics of plot functions that are native to R, and then we went all the way through to much more advanced uh, 
plots over or multiple line graphs. So you could have more than one or two. You could, I could, let's say I had three sellers. You might want to make sure you pick colors that show it better. I could have had uh, you know seller A, seller B, and seller C, and it compared all three of them. In this case, there was just two sellers, um, but this is a great way to show you how to go from basic graphs to very advanced and nice looking graphs and plots that you can actually utilize in documentation and reporting and analytics. I hope you found this interesting and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and make sure you click that bell because that way you'll get notified every time I put out another great video like this or another great process similar to this or something else. And uh, again, have a great day. Thanks.